Hey everyone, Surreal Canine here. Welcome back for more to Sky 3 Absence of Detention. I may sound quiet to you, and the reason for that is doing all this commentary is killing my throat, and we have a 40 minute video ahead of us, so uh, be prepared. <laughs> In the last episode, we uh, did the bios for the post game characters, um, by which I mean the first six extra maps, and. Uh, Routine and Stella. In this episode, we are doing the cast of Disgaea 1. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. I hope you enjoy it. It felt a lot shorter uh, when I was recording it. <laughs> Alright, first up we have Laharo, who is primarily a sword user. He gets 6 sword skills, 4 spear skills, 5 axe skills. He's a very offensive unit, having 140% attack, which is, you know, pretty great. He doesn't get as much uh, move as he did in his own game, but that's fine. His ability, Uber Overlord Soul, increases his special attack damage by 20%. Uh, pair that up with Mal's physical boost, and you get pretty much uh, free damage on your special attacks, which is pretty great. Uh, Etna is... why is Etna here? Oh. Furious Rage. Attack goes up every time a normal attack is increased. I think that's what I was trying to demo here, but I kind of wasn't paying attention. Because <laughs> I'm looking at my laptop while I'm doing this. Laharl's uh, special skills are pretty much identical to how they were in the original game, so I'm just gonna... Shut up, show them off, give my throat a time to rest. <laughs> Actually, no, I guess I will uh, go into this now. His other ability is Suppression Stare, which uh, halves the damage he takes from enemies with less than 50% of their HP. So, uh,. Yeah, if you put that on him, you can uh, attack without really having to worry about getting your face destroyed by the counterattack or on the enemy's turn or whatever. Unless you're fighting Ball. Nothing you can do about that. Next up, we have Etna, and I should mention, uh, you get all Laharo, Etna, and Flan all by clearing extra map 7. And there's really no way for me to show this off, just because uh, all my dudes are so dang powerful already. <laughs> oh well, I guess that's the price we pay for doing the demos this late in the game. I guess. I mean, I could go to uh, incredible lengths to uh, to do a more authentic demo, but I'm lazy. <laughs> Besides, the the ability description is right there in its uh, description. So, next up we have Etna, who is a spear user. She learns 6 spear skills, 4 axe skills, 3 gun skills. Her aptitudes favor attack and speed, uh, along with hit. Although, given her uh, innate propensity for spears, I would probably just recommend uh, giving her a spear and letting it be a day. Her primary ability, Dominant Smile, uh, boosts the stats of allied printies. Her other ability, Ecstasy, uh, increases the EXP she gains when joining a team attack. Mm, pretty good. And again, her abilities are about the same as they were in Disgaea 1. Not much to say here. She's pretty similar to how she was in Disgaea 1, 1 and 2.
<laughs> sexy beam here has an area of effect that is the shape of a heart. It is the most awkward thing ever. Etna's third ability is Sadistic, which uh, increases the damage she deals to an enemy with full HP. Very good for getting one-hit kills on things. I highly recommend it uh, if you're training or you're fighting ball or whatever. It's just a pretty good ability. And uh, viewers at home, feel free to compare this to the last thing we uh, showed off. <laughs> I'm too lazy to pull up a side-by-side. -side. But I mean, can you really blame me? I am, I'm recording all this commentary after work. I'm probably going to be editing these videos after work. I'm tired. I just want to let's play to have some fun. I don't want to put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> I say that and just do a whole thing about character bios. <sighs> Here it uh, Flan. Flan is a bow user primarily, learning five bow skills and three gun skills. Uh, her aptitudes favor healing, definitely. Although, t she's also pretty good with a bow, I guess. Love Field nulls all instant death effects on allies. I'm assuming this means thrown printies, uh, bye bye panels, death blow panels, things like that. Natural Ophi Aura uh, halves the damage she takes from elemental attacks, which is pretty good. You could put that on a tank and call it a day. Actually, better yet, what if you put that on a slime and call it a day? <laughs> she has two uh, attack unique skills and one healing unique skill. Pretty similar to how she was in Disgaea 1 again. So, uh, let's show off her power of healing. Her power of love. Her third ability, Healing Paradise, increases the magic effects of to allies on me. It, uh, it makes people recover twice as much HP when they are healed. There, I put that concisely. <laughs> So yeah, there's Power of Love. It's about the same as it was in Disguy 1. Pretty nice. <coughs> Although, to, by the time you have Flan recruited, you're not really going to need healers. <laughs> Here we go. And it should be noted that uh, the post-game characters all learn their abilities at a much higher level than the main characters, just because they... Uh, join the party at much higher levels. I don't know how this rule applies to the DLC characters considering there isn't a whole lot of uh, info available in the wiki about them. But uh, yeah. Oh, we're talking about mid-boss now. He's a monster type. As you can see, he has a couple different uh, very weird abilities here. Uh, as you can see, his uh, 
primary ability, Harem, boosts his stats by the uh, number of female allies, but it only works if all of the allies are girls, so uh, watch what you do. Beauty Step uh, boosts his equipment gain from shoes. Pretty self-explanatory. Naked doubles his uh, EXP gain when he doesn't have any weapons or armor equipped. Given that uh, most of your offensive potential, as well as most of your s other stats, will come from your weapons and armor, I don't really see the point of this ability. It's probably just there for a quick laugh. <laughs> I mean, you're definitely not going to be grinding with it unless you uh, teach a guy like uh, Omega Fire Plus 8 or something. So here we have his uh, his unique skills. Again, pretty similar to how he was in Disgaea 1. We even have his, uh, his four-way self combo there with the uh, Adonic Buster. <laughs> Pretty great. And then he drops the moon on a guy, which I'm pretty sure belonged to one of his other special attacks. Whatever. Maybe I'm thinking of a different character entirely. I don't know. Oh no, it's an even bigger multi-way combo. <laughs> and here he is magic changing with himself. That's pretty magical. <laughs> Repair yourself. So yeah, next up we are going to show off his magic change skills. And what are we doing? Did I forget to put somebody in a magic change club again? I think I did. Oh well, might as well put everybody in going homers. say magic change but it came out as a yawn let's magic change nice. he's a sword he has sword attacks swords a sword 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 a sword uh very windy there not really the thing you would expect from mid boss but uh whatever I guess. Let's see, his other one is Inscribed Soul, which, oh yeah, uh, pay close attention to this animation here. That, uh... That's that kanji can be read a couple of ways. Uh, chu naka, it basically means middle. And uh, I think the katakana said uh, bomu. Although it could be, um, it could also say boss, as in a uh, mid boss. <laughs> I guess it goes to show that he. Uh, he has come to accept his true name, I don't know. Gordon is the defender of Earth. He's a dude. 
Um, I completely missed the, my chance to talk about his abilities, but I'm going to talk about his abilities. He's a monster type, he magic changes to a sword. Captain's Revenge gives him another action if his normal attack gets dodged. I don't know if this works repeatedly, but uh, probably not, as it would crash the, as it would like soft lock the game if uh, <laughs> if you ran into an enemy with like infinite speed or something. I don't know. Captain Tower uh, increases his offense by 10% times the number of units below him in the tower. So. Put him at the top of a tower, teach him some tower skills, that could be pretty interesting. And Gunner Guild is kind of like Adele's Striker Guild, but it boosts by the number of units with guns. Pretty nice, although it doesn't really... well, I don't know. Maybe it could help Gordon, I mean, he's a monster type, so whatever. <coughs> It kind of makes sense for his character, but not so much from a tactical standpoint. <laughs> I do have to wonder why they uh, consistently make all of these guys monster type units. It's very bizarre. As for Captain Gordon's aptitudes, they favor attack, HP, attack, defense, hit, and speed. HP is his highest, but uh, obviously he is a very up close and personal fighter. He doesn't have much use for int, so uh, give him a red monster weapon, not a gray one. That's pretty much all I have to say about that, actually. So let's magic change him and see what he turns into. It's a lightsaber, or rather, a lightning saber, which is 10,000% cooler. Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, that's a thing. Let's check out his other skill and then move on because we are moving the move. Move, 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 move. I, I'm just rambling at this point and killing my throat for no reason. Congratulations, me. You are smart. He even makes the lightsaber sounds. Kind of. <laughs> it is a lawyer-friendly version of the lightsaber sounds. Let's just say that. <clears throat> Jennifer is yet another monster-type unit, even though she is perfectly capable of using her fists, as we have seen. Uh... Her ability, Kung Fu Master, gives her normal attack splash damage. Very strange for uh, an ability there. <laughs> her ability, Hero Assist, her other next ability, Hero Assist, increases the stats of an adjacent ally with a hero title. Uh, Gordon and Almaz both count as heroes. Um, other than that, uh, future me, you have the task of uh, putting up the list of other characters that count as heroes, okay? Okay. Oh, it looks like uh, Curtis and Prinny Curtis also apply. <laughs> I just looked that up in the thing just now. Uh, her third ability is Lancer Guild, which is like uh, Striker Guild and Gunner Guild, but with spears. Why Jennifer has this, I don't know, other than uh, maybe somebody is a TV troper. <laughs> That's all I can think of. I mean, she's very obviously both the Lancer and the, well, maybe not the Lancer, but uh, she's definitely a hyper-competent sidekick. <laughs> And here we have 
explosive boobs. Sure, why not? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Japan! <laughs> <laughs> My dad does not want to hear about explosive boobs, so he closed the door. <laughs> that sure is a, uh, a an attack. It's a thing. Oh well. I will do my best. Oh yeah. Why go uh, with uh, why go one second with Jennifer without mentioning that that a uh, explosive boobs attack gave her modifications. <laughs> That's right, guy. This guy one cast modifications. Also, for some reason, her magic change form is either a robot head or some kind of no mask. I'm guessing it's a robot head, but it, how exactly is that a fist? Just how? What? It makes no sense. Yeah, that was a thing. Next up, we have Super Robot Thursday, who has the highest abilities of any, or er, highest aptitudes of any character in a game, 155% across the board. Pretty great. As for his abilities, they are Metal Detector, which will, uh, find a treasure chest after beating an enemy. Kind of like bow attackers, but this one is guaranteed to work, I think. Super Barrel Bomb causes damage equal to 100% of the barrel's HP. Um, I attempted to see if that meant he was explosive here, but it doesn't look like it. Maybe it applies to thrown barrels, in which case, why Thursday? And finally, Auto Protect. Um, auto Defends when a targeted by a physical special skill. I think that's what it means. But we will not get to see. Instead, have some robo attacks. Actually, I'm curious as to whether uh, Thursday is able to uh, Reincarnate. I know he wasn't in the original Disgaea, but uh, that seems like something uh, they might overlook in this game. Huh. Attack. Next up, we have Robo Bees. Uh, does not compute. <laughs> what exactly does that have anything to do with bees? Is what I want to know. <clears throat> Finally, we have Surprise Robo, in which we find out that Thursday is a daddy. <laughs> Also, his kids are very explosive. I leave behind a, the Persona 4 Skull Cloud. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's a thing. Let's magic change him and see what we get. I am having some very uh, skippy video today. I don't know what's up with that. 
Oh well, better than having audio desync. <laughs> Change Bogon. Failing rate 100%. That does not sound promising. Here I go. Yeah. It's a bow that flings itself. I guess. And yeah, obviously he is a... Uh, he magic changes to a bow. And we counterattacked and did not get to see his other uh, special skill. Whoops a doodle. Me too. Me too. So while we were talking about this, uh, might I mention that uh, the Steam controller is so weird. I tried playing a Disgaea PC with it and I just it could not figure out a control scheme that made it worthwhile to use. I mean, I got it because it was cheaper than getting another DualShock, and I needed a third controller for my computer for personal reasons, but uh, it's, it's a thing. I can't really see it being easy to use for me ever. But it's here. I have it. So yeah, meet Curtis. He, uh, he also magic changes to a fist. He has a whole bunch of defender abil abilities. As I have said, he is a hero. And, uh... Defender's sword increases the damage by a difference between his current and max SP. Defender's proof uh, boosts his uh, stat gain from belts. Defender's shield automatically defends against special magic, uh, special magic skills. Assuming this means ordinary magic as well as anything else that uses int, but I guess we will have to see. You're too slow. You're too slow. <laughs> Sonic deserves to have his voice butchered. No, oh, I don't even know anymore. And just kind of spouting nonsense at random here, and hoping something sticks. On guard. Take this. Final punch is pretty great. I'm pretty sure uh, we saw this attack too in uh, in Disgaea One. So, uh, yeah. Why did why do you need to move there, Curtis? You kind of had the thing going with where you were, whatever. So yeah, the usual sort of stuff it is stuff stuff. And Rutil's uh, magic change ran out right on time, so let's re magic change and do the thing. I guess this answered my question of whether a character can magic change more than once. It turns out they totally can. Catch and poke, and uh, Solidus Punch, which can only remind me of Solidus Snake, even though I've never played a, a single Metal Gear game ever. But, uh, you know. Now that is what I call a co-op attack. That is pretty sweet. Also, hello, slippers. <laughs> yeah, the level of a treasure chest does not uh, necessarily equate to its bonus tier. That is decided by the map alone. Sadness. You're too slow! Congratulations, Curtis, you blew up the stage. Are you proud of yourself? I sure hope so. <laughs> Next up, let's have Pretty Curtis, because why the heck not? 
Penny Curtis is also a hero. He has three abilities which are pretty similar to a uh, regular Curtis's, at least the first one is. Defender's Gun is like Defender's uh, Sword, except it works with his HP. Super Prinny Bomb causes damage equal to 100% of the Prinny's HP when thrown. So uh, yeah, it makes him quite a bit more volatile than your average Prinny, I think. Requiem ex increases stats by 5% times the number of exploded Prinnies, okay. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> you can kind of see that his, uh... His three skills are, uh, pretty similar, with, uh, Power of Red Moon substituted for, uh... For whichever the first one was that he had, oh well. It looks like his stats are pretty similar, too, with, uh... With uh, trading his uh, defense for a little bit extra speed, it looks like. You're too slow. I have you now. So uh, about this animation, apparently he has modded his uh, his rocket fist to fit over top his uh, adorable printy flippers. That's all I can imagine. Why can't he just detach his flippers, though? That would be even funnier, I think. Oh well. Chalk it up to gratuitous asset reuse. I don't know. Finally, Power of Red Moon. <laughs> the Prinny is in love with his non-Prinny version. Go figure. So, uh, yeah, apparently you can make red moons at will now. <laughs> Etna is not going to be happy about that. Let's check out his magic change skills. Pretty Curtis magic changes to a gun, and, uh, actually I'm pretty sure his magic change skills are identical to a regular Prinny. So, uh, make of that what you will, I guess. And we have one more character from uh, Disgaea 1, but uh, I totally forgot about him in this video. So we are just going to have to save him for the next video. So, uh... Oh. Never mind, he's not identical to a regular Prinny. I was thinking of Hero Prinny. <laughs> Herp a derp, derp a derp a derp, derp a derp. That's what I have to say. And here I am just talking, and I totally missed some pretty great special attacks. So actually, while I'm uh, talking, I might as well uh, go through this character guide and see if I can find any uh, more hero type units. Let's see. You know, I gotta get to the top of this document here. Um, and here I am evidently trying to uh, power up Magentology or something.
So yeah, now that I've powered up Magentology, let's see what it does. Here I go. Prepare yourself. Evidently, it replaces Magic Change with Magic Change. I'm assuming this uh, has something to do with uh, better stats, but I don't really know for sure. <laughs> so yeah, that was uh, kind of a waste of the last several minutes of this video. Oh well. So uh, yeah, that is that will pretty much be all for. Uh, for this video, and next time, uh, we are going to do the bios for the Disgaea 2 and 4 characters. Uh, plus the one Disgaea 1 character that we happen to, that I happen to forget this video. <laughs> Sorry buddy, you're just gonna have to wait till next video. So yeah. Ends the breaks! See y'all later.